the Your Safe Space podcast is recorded on Wurundjeri land. This podcast acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Your Safe Space, the podcast. I'm your host, Adele Marie, and this podcast is here for you. It is a safe space for us to catch up each week to discuss anything and everything. And on today's show, you guys are meeting my sister. Hello, Carla. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm all right. (laughs) (laughs) If you are watching, oh, sorry, I was going to say, if you're watching, you would be able to see Carla on the screen now. We are in the (laughs) studio. Please watch us on the vodcast if you want. Otherwise, you're just listening to us in your ears. That's fine as well. I'm so excited to have you on the show. I'm excited. A little bit nervous. Don't be nervous. I promise it'll be all right. Deep breath. It's just a conversation. Yeah, take a deep breath. (sighs) All right. Feels feels all right. Yeah, it does feel all right. Don't look at my laptop. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I don't know where to look or what to do with myself. (laughs) It's all right. We're just just having a chat. So, I want to know... How is everyone's week going? How has your week been? At the time of recording this, it is actually Monday and last week's episode just went live. So I feel very odd recording so early, but when this goes live, I'll actually be in South Australia with TikTok, which you may have seen on my stories. Exciting. I know. I'm so excited. And usually what we do with the episode is we do an intro, we do a highlight, a gratitude and a struggle. And I'm like, what what have what has happened between last episode and this episode? Not much, but I think Carla, think about your highlights, think about your gratitudes, because I'll get you to share them in a second. I'm gonna give mine. I'm gonna say my highlight will definitely have been going on that trip with TikTok, even though I haven't been at the time of the recording. I am so incredibly grateful to have been invited. I'm so incredibly overwhelmed that I even got invited and I know that I get all these cool opportunities thanks to you guys so a big thank you to you guys for letting me have that and then my gratitude is actually you coming on the podcast because I'm really grateful yeah that's it (laughs) you're cute (laughs) I am really grateful I'm so grateful that you are giving us your time and your energy today and the people wanted you on here so when I put a poll up last week Carla's episode was the most voted for. You got like 60% of the votes. Thanks, guys. I know you want to (laughs) know. And then last week, you were a little bit busy. And so we're doing this this week. And as for my struggle, I'm going to say it's probably still the same. Just feeling a little bit stressed and anxious going into like Christmas and the busy time of year. It's very full on. Yeah. And just trying to obviously manage that. But Carla, firstly, before we get into your highlights yes. and your gratitudes, give us a little intro. Hi, everyone. I'm Carla, <laughs> Adele's sister. <laughs> she is my baby sister. <laughs> yes, I am the baby of us. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's all right. We're going to get to the questions okay. anyway. Yeah. But do you have a gratitude or a highlight or a struggle you want to share? I'm feeling great, grateful for seeing a naturopath last week and yeah. Nice. That's what I'm, <laughs> yeah. Poor Carla has Getting had. Getting on top of my health, I think. And, yeah, it being aligned with, with my values and what I what I like. Yeah, yeah I love that. Carla's yep. been a little bit unwell. Yes. So we're trying to get to the bottom get, of it. Get to the bottom of it and treat accordingly. And do you have a highlight or do you have a um, struggle, anything? If, if not, we can just. I don't think that I. Have a highlight. Oh, well, my highlight's being on here. I was about yeah, to say, sorry. Bitch, you <laughs> sorry. better say your highlight is coming on yeah, my probably podcast. My highlight for the week is going to be doing the podcast <laughs> with my sister. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. I feel like I'm the light on the spot. It's a light, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's all right. No, no, no. I know it's all right. Okay. Just got to get like We're used to it. We're getting up. used to it now. I'm feeling more comfortable as we continue to speak and conversate. <laughs> yeah. And I literally just coughed and you guys wouldn't have uh, seen it or heard it. <laughs> and then I'm like, I've got to edit that out. And I think she's just realized the power of editing. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness for that editing. <laughs> and so you are actually my second guest on my podcast. Yes. And that's a privilege. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. And one thing that I want to ask my guests, because this podcast is all about looking after yourself. It is about showing up for yourself. It is, you know, helping you like live a life that feels good. What is your favorite activity or I guess thing that you do for self-care? It can be anything. I love growing things, just growing anything in the garden. If there's something growing in the garden, then I'm happy. If there's nothing growing in the garden, I'm like, 
Yeah. Need to put something in the garden and grow something. <laughs> we love the garden. And I think yes. TikTok also loves the garden yes, series. Yes, love the garden. And it's good. I think it brings a lot of people joy. But even, you know, I think as someone who is not a green thumb, Carla is a green thumb <laughs> through and through. It's, very, it's a very I natural try, thing I for try. you. Yeah, I think, yes. I'm double Virgo. Virgo moon, Virgo sun. So I love <laughs> the earth. <laughs> What's your rising? Scorpio. Scorpio. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes yeah, everything makes it so does much make sense. sense, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to ask you what your star sign was, but you just oh, fit okay, me to yeah, it. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's jump into the questions, I reckon. Let's jump this into It's going to be fun. Qu- this is going to be fun. You guys, thank you for submitting them. I appreciate you. The first question was who is older? But we've already covered yeah, that. Yeah, we already know that. Adele is older. Not yeah. that, not by that much. Mum and Dad were like, let's have two kids now. <laughs> they really popped us out. <laughs> yep. One after the other. Literally. So I was born March 93 and Carla was September 94. Yep. So like, boom, 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 boom. I actually think you were a New Year's Eve baby. Oh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> was. I definitely, New Year's resolution, have a child. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were, because she's uh, September 5th. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just crazy. And this actually flows into the next question because someone asked, was growing up so close in age fun or annoying? Well, uh, I don't know. I feel like Adele's always been like (laughs) older. (laughs) Like I feel like... The big sister energy. Yeah, big sister mum, big sister mama energy. Like, you know, like second mum, I feel like. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) No, don't be sorry. I think it was nice. Like, I think (laughs) for me... Growing up so close in age, as kids was like we all you always had someone to do something with. Yeah, I think we yeah we didn't know any different. I yeah. guess like or like if we wanted to play like restaurants in the cubby house. Yeah, or like send each other notes in a little yeah. hole in the house. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you need to explain what that is. Oh, here. um, at our old house, we used to have one of those vacuum cleaners that were inside the house. They used to build them like that, like the ducted vacuum, ducted vacuum, and then they had like a little hole pigeon thing, and me and Adele would write little notes and like leave them in there hopefully before mum put the vacuum cleaner in there so we (laughs) we got them yeah (laughs) one of our favorite pastimes (laughs) and then I think growing up together as teens we we I feel like it was still fun like we had so much fun we've had a lot we have a lot of fun but at the same time we also (laughs) uh, annoy each other we also had fights and stuff too it wasn't all pretty flowers and roses but I feel like yeah we I feel like being close like we did like you know being on school holidays yeah Doing random Getting things. Getting up to shit on yeah. school holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Rollerblading in the garage. <laughs> Playing ice hockey. Yeah. <laughs> we, used to, we used to play ice hockey in the house. We don't have an ice rink. <laughs> but we had tiles. Yeah. And that we made the most of it. We made fun on the tiles. Yeah. And then, the even, and then even now I'm going to say... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is already the best episode I've ever done. So we used to spray... Mr. Sheen on the floor. Yeah, we did. And then we had the knee pads <laughs> from the rollerblades, which we would put onto our feet. and that Or even just our socks. We yeah, would slide socks. or like blankets. I remember you pulling me on the blanket <laughs> down the hallway. So I'm going to say overwhelmingly, <laughs> it's been fun. Yeah. Slightly annoying. Yeah, of course. 90% fun, 10% <laughs> annoying. Yeah. Would you say the same ratio? Yeah, I would say the same ratio. All right, next question. Uh. What is your favourite thing about each other? <laughs> oh... Do you want me to go first? If you, what do you want me to go first? No, I can go first. Okay. I love that you're just a boss ass bitch. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love like yeah, everything that you do is like I got this, like and I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it right. Like It's the Aries. Yeah, it must be. I like yeah, I feel like yeah, you do and you're a good example to have I think as a sister. You're going to make me cry. Aww. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't cry. But I love it. Like, it's nice to have, like, yeah, boss-ass woman in my life. Someone to look up to, uh, look up to. And she's also, yeah, being other, like, other people look up to her as well. So I think it's really nice and refreshing. Thank you. I'm trying yeah. to not be so much of a boss-ass bitch. No, but, like, but not actual boss-ass bitch. Like... Yeah, because I'm, like, I, I'm like trying to embrace that, like, you don't always have to be hustling. You can just, no, like, be of chill course. as well. No, but you, I think you do... I think you're... It's perfect what you're doing. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. My turn. Keep doing you. My turn. (laughs) My favourite thing about Carla is just the way that you approach life. And I think you're very good at, and this is something that I think fascinates a lot of people about you. 
you're very good at just like living true to like who you are living in line with your values you've got the way that you see the world is like just very chill and very much I don't know how to explain it but the the best way I can give you an example and this is where I see the polar difference with us but like Carla would be happy to just book a one-way ticket literally anywhere in the world not book a hotel not book (laughs) not even book a hostel not even book anything else she would just book the ticket and just pack like a little bag and she'd be happy to go yes and that would be so much fun for her. For me, I'm like, I need a schedule. I need to know what we're <laughs> I need to know what we're doing at 9.45. I need to know what we're doing at 10.45. Like I need to be organized. And I just can't like relax with that flow with life. But okay. I feel like you yes. do that really well. Thank you. And then I also think one other thing. I think she has like this uh, very pure aura. And anyone that meets her, Aww. anyone that meets her, see, I'm serious. Anyone You're that meets cutie. her, I'm serious. <laughs> and I even think this as well. When my friends meet you or when people meet you, they're always like, oh, my God, Carla. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> and I, I don't know what you want to call that. I'm calling it the aura. <laughs> but it's true. You've got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's so beautiful to hear. And You're welcome. Accept and receive from you. <laughs> All right. Next question. This is funny. How do you handle having someone <laughs> filming so often in your house? <laughs> do you try and avoid it at all? No, I don't think it's about avoiding. Like, you know, Del's doing her life. I'm doing my life. And I think that, yeah, as long as there's, like, communication, like, I'm recording, you know, it's fine anyways. I like to be outside most of the time anyway. So I think we've got a better yeah, we at make, it. Yeah, we make do with what, you know, I think it's been a bit of a... Learning. Learning curve, as everything in life is, though. Just, yeah, about understanding, which we both understand, and you know, we both have that respect. So I don't think it's, like, yeah, I think it's fine. <laughs> There's been times where, like, you know, I've experienced maybe, like, you know, my mental health, like, you know, and I'm like, get that thing away from me. <laughs> or yeah. I, You know, I don't want to be in that, which is... And Adele respects that as well, so that's right. beautiful. I always make sure that it's okay, firstly, if I ever get her on camera, because I think... You are also probably someone who doesn't use social media like I do. No. We have a very different relationship with social media and I respect that. And I would never, even today, like I would never like force anything on you. Everything needs to be accepted by you. Mm -hmm. And I would always ask. And it's just about communicating. Yes. And I think if anything, the person who's problematic at filming now Mm. is dad. (laughs) What has Adele created? (laughs) <laughs> what does she create it? Because dad's got his own TikTok <laughs> and it's so funny. He'll be like, shh, I'm filming. <laughs> and then we all just have to be quiet. Yeah, so there's two now. There's two of us. <laughs> but it's okay. It's fine. And it's also, two. I'm going to say, some really fun things have come out of it, like the gardening series. Yes, I People love, love the gardening yep. series as well. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like that's a way for Carla to really just like be herself. Yeah, and by herself in my comfortableness. Yeah, and then... It works out well because I don't think you would then go edit and upload it. No. You're happy for no, me to I'm happy be the producer. Do that for me. <laughs> Carl is the talent. I don't have time for that. <laughs> and I'm the producer. Yes. <laughs> this question is kind of related to question two, but I'll read it out anyway. What was your relationship growing up together and how is it now? Have you guys always gotten along? Do you fight? Yes, we fight. Yes, we I think it's normal. <laughs> As <laughs> siblings, and anyone listening to this who has a sibling yeah. will tell you that you are going to argue. And I'll tell you why. And I'm just going to take over this question. Go. But, like, <laughs> you are two individual human beings, yeah. right? And you're not always going to get along. And there's going to be different shit going on in both of your worlds, especially if you've got, like, multiple siblings as well. That just adds more to the more dynamic, people. too. But I would say, like, we've always had a fairly good relationship, like, at our core, very similar values in certain areas. And then I would also say that, like, of course, we've argued. Of course, there's been patches. Even, like, during puberty, when, you were, when we were both going through puberty Ooh, at the same guys, time. We that used was to hot and heated. We used to fight <laughs> so much. And, like, we used to, like... Brawl. <laughs> we used to brawl. Adele was a um, kicker and a scratcher. <laughs> Do you remember when you broke my finger? I broke your toe, didn't I? You broke, the f- you broke my okay, finger. Okay, and the toe too, remember? Yeah. <laughs> But Sorry. No, don't. It's fine. You don't it's have to right. It's all right. This one time, we, we will have to just pause and take, tell this story. This one time that we did brawl, like, I don't know, we were young. It was like pre teens, I yeah. would say. Like maybe like 11 and 12. Anyways, Adele, we were brawling. And I think we had, like, <laughs> anyways, Adele passed out. And 
you know, just like dropped dead. And I was like, oh my God, like, wake up, wake up, wake up. And then, and then she, <laughs> and she just pretended like she pretended that she had passed out. Yeah. You know, when you play that trick on your dog. And I like thought some I had hit her in the head or something and she had passed out. I and really she like played her. dead for a little <laughs> bit and then like I can't remember if you woke up and was like ah. I, th- <laughs> I, I think I did. Like played dead and then I'm like, ah. and then she was like ah. <laughs> Anyway, we had we had a we had a lot of fights. I would say now our fight is We not definitely don't physical. physical. Yeah, not <laughs> physical. I think I think I remember the last time we were physical was we in the hallway. Many like moons ago. Uh, yeah, like it was ages as a teenager, ago. Yeah, teenager. Like, like we haven't been. Yeah, we, no, we haven't. Yeah, physically. Physical. And I think it was just like, okay, we're both adults now. Like, we don't hit each other. <laughs> like, Correct. you know. And also, there's a way. We don't hurt each other. And there's a way to go about if we've got a problem. Yeah, communication, I would say, like, has held our relationship, I would say. Like, we've had to yeah. communicate and yeah. break those barriers and walls down of our differences. Yeah, or any disagreements. And yeah, I think disagreements even too. going into adulthood, you become two individual adults. You experience life differently and you can be raised the exact same way in the exact same household and you can have a totally different experience to each other. And I just think to work through that it's just been a matter of yeah verbalizing things communicating I would say that our relationship will stay strong and it has been strong Mm -hmm. and fighting is also normal I think the good thing about having a sibling is like they're like the only person in the world that like you could have an argument with want to rip their hair out and then 10 Two minutes later, later, I'll be like, do you want to get dinner? Like, what, <laughs> <laughs> what should we get on Uber Eats? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's just forgotten about. <laughs> I do like that. And I also had a note in here mm-hmm. um, about when we were kids. Mum used to dress us up as twins. Yeah, I forgot to mention that before, mm-hmm. but... I need to put some of these uh, pictures in the Facebook group. I think I will because I have a pod- <laughs> I've got a podcast Facebook group. But I think Mum desperately wanted twins, and so as kids, she really wanted us to like be twins. Yeah, different Which colors, but same thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we were cute though. Still are so. Yeah, still cute. Still cute. Still cute. All right, next question. What made you become a vegetarian? Also, I just want to say I love your gardening tips. Oh, thank you. Who have asked this question? Well, I just want to say that I actually don't want to label myself as a vegetarian or a vegan or anything yeah. because I actually listen to my body. I have been listening to my body recently with if I feel like I need some, like if I feel like meat, I will eat meat. If um, you feel like fish, I will, you'll eat yeah. fish. So I, I think like, yeah, I think what started me being a vegetarian originally, I think I was like 17 I don't know, my time's a bit off. Um, I 17, I think I was. I and think you were. It was because one of my friends went, like, yeah, v- vegetarian. And I was like, why would you not eat chicken nuggets? Like, you know, why would you not eat? And then I was like, oh, how can I judge? Uh, why should I judge that? Maybe I should try that and see if there's any benefits to it. And I stopped, yeah, I stopped eating meat. I think I was, I was still eating fish. And I just really noticed, like, a difference in my body. And, I, yeah, I used to, yeah. I, I, I just How you felt. yeah, it just really made a difference on my body, and I I listened to my body, and and still to this day, like yeah, when I'm when I'm about to when it's that menstrual cycle time, I do feel like yeah, lately I have been feeling like I like need some red meat, so I will eat some when I feel like it. When ER makes pasticcio, I'll eat that. You know, when I was like traveling in Asia, like you know, I, I stayed with this family and they cooked us fish and, like, you're not going to say no to that. Like, you know, there's sometimes situations, like, you know, where you've been given something and sometimes you just need it. Uh, like, I'm happy to receive, receive that, you know, and it's, um, yeah, so, I yeah, I don't know. It's been, a, like, a little, uh, yeah, I prefer not to, like, label myself as anything because, like, I might change my mind, like, one day. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And I think we obviously had a conversation about all the questions that, you guys sent through before we we Uh obviously asked them because I thought it would be a good opportunity to speak about that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think you've cycled out of either eating meat or not eating meat. Sometimes you've even like dipped into like what people would call veganism and then you've just been on this lifelong journey. But I think that's what it always will be. All right. And then this was not actually a question, (laughs) but (laughs) I'm springing one on you. She's she's laughing (laughs) because we just had a moment. (laughs) But I want to talk about the sustainable element of of your vibe because yeah. you've played a, I'm going to say, a big part in like changing how I do things and seeing how you are sustainable and I'm just going to say conscious mm-hmm. is something that I think 
people could learn from. And so I want to like unpack that a little bit. Okay. And maybe, I don't know, what would be your tips to somebody wanting to become a bit more conscious or wanting to make a little bit of a better impact on the world? Well, I think what it comes down to is education. Do some research in, you know, I guess, um, you know, what's recyclable, what's not recyclable. Even That's that like the most simplest thing because like we are like – we live in a world of consumerism, which is fine. Um, it's just like, what can we do with that? And yeah, how can we make? How can we? How can we make do? And even on that, like Carla has definitely taught me what is rubbish, <laughs> what can be <laughs> recycled, and we. But got it's it. so good because sometimes, like you know, I'll be like, "Is that? Is, can you put that in the recycling bin?" And she's like, "Yes, I've I looked. Checked. Like you know, <laughs> yes, I know." And I'm like, "Yes, my sis, that's my sis." And I will <laughs> say as well, and this is one thing, and I I will eventually do an episode on like social media and like content creation and influencing uh if you will but one thing I noticed is the whole deal with like PR packages and so much right (laughs) and and I I've explained this I don't know if I actually have explained this but like let's just say a brand wants to send you something right a lot of the time I actually say no I I say no 98% of the time and I get it because it's like PR for their company and it's like marketing and all all good and well. I understand the reason behind it, but let's just say it's like a makeup company, for example, and they want to send you a new concealer. This makeup company in their PR pack won't just send you one concealer. They'll send you the whole entire range and they'll fill it with lots of stuff on the inside and then that will be in a box and that will be in another box and then there's so much stuff and I'm not ungrateful for any PR that I've ever gotten. I'm very, very grateful. But I that waste now freaks me out. And so the reason it freaks me out is because of Carla. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't apologize because no. I think <laughs> she's definitely taught me to be more conscious in that space yeah. to try and minimize the waste. And so what do I do now with the packaging? She keeps the, the colorful stuff that she can reuse which I love because I, I put love, it love. into my she adds giveaways. It to her giveaways which I was so thankful for like that's perfect because it's like brand new practically like reuse yeah. where you can we reuse like a lot of the boxes and I do feed a lot of the Paper. non-ink cardboard to my worms or I just put it in the garden and let it decomp- decompose a little bit and yeah the worms love the cardboard so we are thankful for the no ink boxes guys Get get onto the no ink boxes, <laughs> and sometimes I'm able even <laughs> able to like reuse the boxes yeah, we in the use giveaway. The re- yep, or we use them for like storing other stuff, or yep, sometimes to I transport just other things. Yeah, give them to my friends if they need to move out somewhere. It's yeah, it's good. So we, we do reuse a lot of the stuff that she does get now. Yeah, but I would say maybe like top three tips for people is understanding and like maybe doing a little research into like Mm. what is recyclable what is not and making sure you put away your waste in the right bin and then gonna say like reuse where you can because that's one thing that I've started to do and like I'll continue to do and is there any other tip I don't think actually it's a good tip oh no say it (laughs) (laughs) what I was gonna say is like pick up three pieces of rubbish but that's a good tip. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, as kids, like, do you remember, like, on schoolyard? Yes. Like, you pick up three pieces and, like, the whole yard's, like, done. Imagine if all the humans just, like, went around. I sort of make myself conscious to, like, yeah, if I'm, like, walking around. It, there's always rubbish bins, like, even at the beach, just pick up Correct. three. You've done your good, to, like, you know. At the beach, especially. And it's just, like, a little bit. And then, like, you know, people see you doing that and it encourages people, other people to also want to do that, too. So, okay, it's not a silly tip. It's a good tip. It's a great tip. Yeah. I'm glad we <laughs> Glad we kept that in. <laughs> Carla's just having a drink break, guys. And then we're going to get into another good question. All right. So next question is, how was coming out for you? Oh. And what was your journey like? Okay. <laughs> and I want to say, I've asked Carla if she's comfortable to answer this. <laughs> and she said yes. Yes. And yeah, I'm grateful that you're going to be vulnerable with us and share Thank it with you. us. Thank you, guys. Well, I... I would, I don't know where to start because like, you know, I feel like coming out, like I feel like it's even a question, like it's still a thing that I'm, I'm still coming out to some people, you know, like, yeah, you know, it's get like constantly, a never ending thing. yeah, do you have a boyfriend, like, you know, and it's, yeah, you know, it, which is fine, no worries at all, but um, I think like, it was a, de- it was a very different world. It was definitely a different world, you when know, Carla back then. first came out. Yeah. It was definitely 
I, I don't mean, know. And also being like, I don't know, I went to a, a Catholic primary school and a high school. They know. I've, I've talked about oh, okay, the Catholic yeah. school. Yeah. It was a Catholic school, so you guys get the <laughs> gist. But obviously, Carla went to the same school as, as I did, and I think there was not space for you to be part of that. Yeah, you know? it was just definitely not a safe space. It wasn't. And, I'm like, you know, I had some interesting experiences, like, with religion teachers as well. Like, you know, where it's telling me that I'm, like, going to hell, like, you know. And, and sorry, experience. I'm just going to butt in. You're not yeah. going to hell. And anyone that's listening to this, if you're thinking of coming out or you're unsure about your sexuality or anything like that, like, you are not going to hell. Yeah, you are loved and you are made perfect. Exactly, exactly. Just the way that you are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what was your journey like? Okay, so I mean, nerve-wracking as hell, like, you know, as I said, came from a pretty conserved, I think, yeah, anyways, it was like, A no conservative words. world. Yeah, very conservative and, yeah, emotionally, like, it really, like, frizzled my brain about, like, who I am, what I am, made me question absolutely everything. But coming out, like, I think... Thank goodness. Shout out to my laws, my bestie. <laughs> Love be you. Be <laughs> Thank goodness for her. I had like a supportive friend. She was the first per- person I would say that I verbally out loud said that I was attracted to the same sex. So it was nerve wracking as hell. And yeah, like I, I think like I definitely did not want to be on like this planet because I thought I was like so abnormal. Like and like this is wrong. Like this is I, I thought, you know, there was lots of other things, you know, I felt like maybe I was born in the wrong body at one stage, like just so many things. Like and I needed to just get it out. And I think like, yeah, once slowly getting it out, like, you know, having laws there. I was like, you know, I was a young, young teenager then and I didn't tell like my family or I, I just didn't like speak to my family about it until I was like, you know, I think 18 really. And I was like even still nerve wracked, nerve wracked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you were nervous. I was nervous as to, I guess, like, yeah, be, to be accepted. Like, I think, like, it's – and, like, you hear so many stories as well, like, of, you know – um People not being accepted. People not being accepting. And, like, you know, you obviously don't want to wish that for yourself. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know what, like, we're living this life for no one else but ourselves. And uh, as I said, like, we're perfect just the way that we are. And we, like, don't need to listen to the outside. Like, yeah, outsiders and – The society The standards. society. Yeah, of like what's normal and what's not. Like, come on. So yeah, like I think with the fam, it was like a heaps more nerve wracking to sort of um, conversate with because they're the people that love me the most, you know. And you want to like, you know, you you take their accept, like you want their acceptance. Acceptance. So I actually wrote mum a letter because I was like so so scared. Yeah, just coming out <laughs> in my letter, and it was comfortable for me. Like I felt comfortable writing the letter, and I'm glad that I did because like yeah. I had it on a piece, like I wrote it on a piece of paper. It was something for her to like look at and read and like, yeah, look at, I guess. Mum still actually has that letter, the little cutie. Bless her little soul. And yeah, like there's still like these moments or conversations that you have. Yeah, that I have that, you know, you're constantly (laughs) coming out, which is fine. Yeah. (laughs) But like, I think like this day and age, it's so, I feel like there's so much more support than what there was then. Thankfully, um, but there's thankfully, still a long way to go. There's definitely still a wa- wa- long way to go. And yeah. What I want to talk about, mm-hmm. and obviously Carla didn't mention this, but our family obviously love and accept her. Yes, and that was never do. not going to happen. But yeah. I think there are things that you can do to be like a better ally or a better like support person for pe- for people in your life that may be part of that LGBTIQA plus community. And so I'm going to say some tips that I would give if you do have someone in, in that community in your life is to like hold space for them, to listen to them mm-hmm. without judgment, to have an open mind as well. And even like to not expect them to have to like come out to you or have to have the conversation because at the end of the day like you don't also owe anyone that or have to tell anyone that if you don't feel comfortable or you don't want to I will also say that obviously like you you can talk to this living your truth yeah nothing beats living your truth feels better yeah it definitely does because this person said I'm scared I won't be accepted and I'm scared I'll lose friends did you lose friends I think I retracted because I was still in high school and you know when you're younger you really care what people think and what people are saying so I think I like yeah really retreated and like you know went 
you know, into my own sort of... Isolation. Yeah, my isolation and bubble and still, like, my journey on, like, accepting myself, I think, and sort of, like, yeah, where I placed myself in world in the world, sort of, you know, in my brain. <laughs> like, oh, where do I fit in now? <laughs> yeah, and what I would say to that is, like, if you... And I genuinely believe this for, like, anything. When you lose people in your life, for whatever reason, it gives then space for like better people yeah to better come people in. to come in and to accept you i never had i don't think i ever had like someone be like oh Car- carla likes <laughs> the same gender i'm not going to be friends with her like i don't yeah. didn't have any of that like i feel like yeah i did really have supportive where people pulled away as well that's totally cool like you know i've got yeah let amazing them. yeah i've got amazing if friends people and people in my life so people come and go in your life you know they come they teach you things and then they leave yeah, sometimes we you spoke know? about that in yeah um, the, bre- the friendship breakup episode that okay, like yep. sometimes people aren't like in your life forever. Yeah. You might lose friends fine. along the way. But yep. again, just back to what I said, it's like, well, if you're going to lose people, if they're going to like judge you for coming out, let them leave your life. Yeah, because you that is not like that. a person you want that you people want to accept life. you and love you just the way that you are. You don't need to be doing anything really. Like people just need to love you. I love that. And that's yeah. really a message that I try to share on this podcast. It's like, you are just the way that you are is yeah, already you're perfect. perfect. Like and you already yeah, you have everything you need within. That's it. But like it's so yeah, it's so hard in this um this day and age to like and yeah to forget that. But don't forget it because that's our pa- like it's your power within yourself. You know, no one can take that from you at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, next question: <laughs> Tips for bonding with siblings as I struggle to get along with my own sister. Mm-hmm. So what tips would you give to this uh, listener? Because there were a few questions like this that came in. And I think if I'm just thinking what tips I would give and like think of yours, I'll go first. You go first. I would say you want to firstly becoming aware and understanding that like your sibling, your sister or your brother or whoever is like a whole ass person on their own, right? And they're doing the best that they can with the knowledge that they have at all times. That's what I like to tell myself about everyone in my life. Mm -hmm. But then looking for ways that you can meet them where they're at and find that common ground and find that whether it's like shared interests or maybe you're even like trying something new to bond on their level. Like the garden is a prime example of that. I said at the start, like I'm not a green thumb at all. When I moved to Sydney... (laughs) One of my friends got me a plant and they were like, oh, this is like a new chapter of your life. I killed that plant. And then people proceeded to get me plants after that. And I killed every single one of them. Oh, I didn't know this. I was in Sydney. Okay. Okay, Well, good. (laughs) (laughs) Not a plant, not a plant girl, but Carla is the green thumb. And so we've bonded. And I think it was last year, especially in lockdown, the garden like kept me sane, especially when I was going through that really rough patch. Mm. Yeah, you really looked after it. Watering the garden was like, I was like, this is my job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that was Carla's thing that she shared with me. But I think that's also played a part in, in strengthening yep. our, our bond. Mm-hmm. But what tips would you have for someone to want to bond better with their sibling? I think like, yeah, making sure that you have like some time for it, like with each other as well. Like I think, you know, there's been like, I think going down to the beach together last year was nice and we did have our time and we reminisced on all the funny things like yeah yeah, just having make some time for each other i think is i love that is nice have have, hold the space for it yeah 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 just have like a chat like you know and you can feel when someone wants a chat when someone doesn't want to chat you know just like ask them like would you like to hang out what day suits you you yeah, know like yeah time. make time for them and then they'll real they'll feel and hopefully know that they want that you want to hang out with them so you can hang out with them yeah and then i also think as well i don't know maybe there's an element of i don't know maybe it's even as i've gotten older i i think it, we've gotten better at it too yeah. like and obviously we live yeah, in the definitely. same house so there's that yeah, too but even when we didn't live in the same house i think we still yeah had like a bond and like oh yeah sti- definitely like oh, i remember yeah. when i was in sydney carla drove this was like right yeah right before covid Eee-hee. lockdown carla drove from <laughs> melbourne to sydney on her way where were you going we were going to knit to byron yeah to byron she she drove and she drove up to sydney to come visit yeah, me we stopped in and, saw and i girl. hadn't seen and it was like five o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> i didn't care no it was the best i didn't care what time and then it we was. actually stayed like on the way on back. the night yeah yeah. on the way back which was really it was really nice and and she made pizzas for us and she was so cute had all our towels and everything i was like with three of my other friends so she like took four of us in yeah and it was nice 
Of course. I would, yeah, it was I would, really nice. I would do that. And I just think like, I don't know, with anything, and I always say this, like when you focus on the good, the good grows as well. So like focusing on the good interactions, focusing yeah. on the nice stuff. And then try if, there, if there's been moments in your life where like you felt your relationship was stronger, go back to that and like reenact yeah. it or recreate it or make that space for it. Because yeah. I definitely think it's possible too. Another question, which we kind of already answered, what do you guys like to do together? The beach? Yeah, beach. Garden. Garden. Anything creative? Yeah, we like to hang out. When you let me paint the van, the van that that's was actually due for need some need some of those flowers on the side of the van again. Yeah, Carla's a very creative being, and so I like to yeah things. Yeah, yeah, you are. You're very hands on as well. Yeah, and so we engage. We engage. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so we do stuff like that together. But then I think you've also been like very supportive in other areas of my life. When I was doing powerlifting, oh yeah, she would come to my powerlifting. I'm her number one supporter. Competitions. You know, when I started this podcast, she was like, "Oh, I listened to your podcast. It was really good." I was like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> <laughs> and I never ever expect any of my family to like watch or listen to my <laughs> shit. I don't. They they already live with me, so they don't have to. Well, I support her 110. percent you know? And vice versa. Yeah, whatever she needs to do and wants to do, I'm her number one fan. I it reminds me of when you graduated uni and then <laughs> everyone's like clapping, clapping, and then and they call screaming. Adele and I'm like, yeah. She's screaming. But even like when we work together at Origin as oh well. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so oh. I've spoken about that. That was really, actually, that was a really fun time of our lives. Yeah, that was we a used fun to go era. to work together. We used to. <laughs> 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 we used to drive in together she would drive me in and i would have naps it was a good it was so fun it was because good. we worked together at the energy company mm-hmm. and we you were there for about a year and a half yeah it was about a year and a half and it was just a freaking vibe i don't know i'm already protective of my little sister anyway <laughs> and i'm just as protective as but like guys. would never <laughs> let anyone like if, if a customer was like mean to her or something i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> no one's mean to my sister only i'm allowed yeah, to be mean to her yeah that's how i feel too <laughs> as well i'm like anyone fucks with my sister I'm like, <laughs> not a violent person, but then I like, yeah, want to yeah. be, but then I'm like, I don't actually want to be. Yeah, correct. But no, we've done we've done a lot together. We yeah. work together. But I would say the most fun I think I've had doing fun stuff together is like the garden or the beach. Yeah, garden, beach. And both of those are like nature, outdoors, yeah. which we both equally love. Yes. Yeah. And then this is kind of tied into that. But what age were you two the closest? Oh. I think, I'm going to say now. Yeah, I would, I would say now. Would you say now? I would say, yeah. I would probably say now too. Yeah. Because then I, I think... Say, I feel like there's been like plops of our closeness, but I th- would yes. say probably now like is the is the closest that we've been. Agreed. Yeah, definitely say now too. And then I'm going to wrap it up. How quick does time go? I knew it was going to go quick. It does. Uh, but <laughs> I want to know like what success means to you and what success what looks success like means for you. Me. Oh, yeah. yeah. What a question. Okay. I just sprung it on you. Sorry, yeah, I didn't beautiful. tell you about that one. Oh, no, that's okay. Success to me is pure happiness. Happiness inside, I think, is, is success. Like, you know, as long as you're happy, that is success to me. Yeah. yeah. That's what success, di- success is. You can't be happy all the time, which is fine as well. Like, you know, I'm not saying ultimate happiness is... Can you um, tell that we're related, by the way? Because <laughs> I, I always say that. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, unreasonable yeah, to be happy all the time. If you've got that, like, happiness inside, things can happen to you and, like, it's... Like you're gonna you you you're happy, so it doesn't you flow with yeah, it. Yeah, do, all the other stuff is outweighed of it. That's so cute. And then one other question, I'm just gonna throw it out there. But what are you working on at the moment? What's something exciting happening in your life that you can share with the people? <laughs> if you want to share, um, at the moment I am preparing my van. <laughs> so she's got a van. Got a van. And she's gonna travel in that. Yes, that's the plan. Hopefully, Carla loves the van life. Yes. Hopefully, get it done soon. You'll get it and done. Hi- no, I will get it done. It's She's just been a matter working of the really fact hard of on when. It. Yes, I've just yes, getting my my health has been number one priority at the moment, Correct. and then that will follow suit. Yeah. Yes. But you guys can definitely uh, catch Carla sometime. Maybe on the road. <laughs> Maybe on the road. <laughs> she does actually get recognized. Or the beach. Out. Yeah. Sometimes I've had some people. How do you feel me. about that? I think it's cute. Adele's sister. Adele's sister. <laughs> yes, I'm Carla Adele's sister. <laughs> yeah, I will say, if you see her, 
Carla. <laughs> her name's Carla. But that's okay. You can call me Adele's sister too. I'm actually she, you, used you are to you. it. You're not I, just my I, sister. I, I, I know I am just me. Carla, but I think it's cute as the... Carla with a K. Carla with a K. Not with a C. Not with a C. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I used to say when I, I was know. a kid. Because everyone would give you a C. <laughs> yeah, everyone would always write C and I'd be like, ah, it's K. Yeah. <laughs> but but anyway. now I just don't even care. <laughs> Whatever. <just> <laughs> yeah. But thank you, Carla, for coming on and joining me. Thanks so I much for having it. me. I've had a really good time on the potty. Was it fun? It was fun. Was it, was it what fun. you thought it would be like? I don't know what I... I don't think I had any expectations. I knew it was going to be a conversation. We had a debrief anyways. We did. I like, you know, just like prep me. I just wanted you to be comfortable. You know, I was definitely comfortable and I definitely had a great time being on here. And will you come back? I would love to come back. Oh, there we yeah, go. I'd love to come back. So... Yeah. yeah, if you're happy to have me. I'll have you back <laughs> any day of the week. All we right. can talk about serious things. <laughs> <laughs> we can go in more depth or have a different yeah. topic. But <laughs> thank you for joining me. You guys will probably catch Carla in the gardening series on my TikTok yes. or randomly in my weekly vlog on YouTube. Yes. And if you like this episode or you liked hearing from Carla, let us know. Give us a rating on yes. Spotify. Please. Give us a review on Apple yes, or comment or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yes, guys, get <laughs> on that YouTube channel. <laughs> and I also want to say at the time of this podcast going live, the next day, so the Monday, the 21st of November, will be the Australian Podcast Awards. So oh, don't thank forget you. to drop a nomination because <laughs> I already have. <laughs> she voted for me. Yes, of course. I did. I did tell her she had to. Yes. And Please do the same, guys. Oh. How amazing. Well, I think the voting mo- might be closed by the time this episode is up. Oh, okay. But that's okay. That's okay. We hope that you voted and thank you if you did. Oh, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> Taking off the run sheet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, what we always do to end the episode okay. is we tell people, have a great week. We hope something amazing happens to you. Yes, we do. What advice do you want to give them for the week? Just smile. Like, just smile. <laughs> Even if you see someone, you know what? Mission of the week, if you see someone like frowning, try to make them smile. Like, smile and watch them smile true when yeah. i go for walks with franklin i always like smile and say hi to people yeah. while i'm walking and people always do it even back. if you're not happy it actually re- re- uh, releases endorphins oh so let's do it now we'll smile and we'll say kill the week ahead guys we yes. love you so much thank you for joining thanks us thanks everyone see you next time bye bye Ooh. <laughs> it's still going <laughs> it's fine say bye bye